Rebecca comes from Vocal, the voice of carers across Lothian in Scotland. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Can I see my slides on this? Just, is it? Ah, okay. <laughs> this is very technical. And I move it with this. If you just use this one, okay. the green one for forward, and if you want to go back to the red Grand. one. Great. Yeah. Okay, hi there. Um, my name is Rebecca Caulfield from Vocal Carer Centre in Edinburgh. Um, uh, we're a local organisation. We work in Edinburgh and the Lothians, for those of you that know Scotland. I'm, no, I'm sure you know Edinburgh. And um, we uh, work locally, but we work within the national organisations as well. <clears throat> my role is funded through our National Health, Health Service, um, so I work for the Carer Centre, but I'm funded through our, our, our National Health Service to deliver carer awareness training to NHS staff and students within the region. I've also been involved with the Innovage in uploading the content uh, to the Scottish platform, so I've been involved in, in, in that way. The programme that I've been doing, training care professionals, has been going for the last eight years. Um, last year, I trained over 800 care professionals. So this short presentation is just about some of the learnings that I've found and also what we've heard from carers. <clears throat> just a bit of background about the care professionals in Scotland, because I know it does vary across uh, Europe and what we term care professionals. Within Scotland, we have NHS Scotland, where we're um, devolved from the rest of the United Kingdom in this way, um, not in other ways, although we want it to be. Um, <laughs> some of us want it to be. Um, so we have over 140,000 staff uh, who work across 14 uh, regions. Um, we also have 191,000 people who work within social services. Until recently, those services were very um, separate. We worked separately. Uh, but there's been a new bill that's been passed in Scotland where we're working towards a vision of integration. So integrating our health and social care uh, for 20, 2020, that vision is. And it's already started. We feel it's a bumpy road ahead, um, but hopefully the outcome will be that, that much more transparent and better health service. But I'm sure across Europe, and you're all the same, our problem lies with funding cutbacks. And we are facing a real time of austerity at the moment. So, <clears throat> if my video works, I think the first thing um, to think about before we look at um, thinking about the needs of care, um, care professionals is we need to find out what our audience needs from care professionals and our audience as carers. So the best way of finding that out is to ask them. And we have, we've asked carers what they think about how they should be treated by care professionals. So I've got a video that I'll just play in a second. Um, just um, the first bit, this is a video that we show to care professionals. Um, the lady's name's Ramona. She's quite Scottish, so I apologise in advance. I'm quite Scottish, but she is quite Scottish. Um, so um, the first part is about the impact of caring. So I think it's quite interesting for you to see that part of the video. But the second part is the most important part for us to listen to about the empowerment. Okay, so if we can play the video. As a carer, you can feel quite isolated, and you, it, it's a kind of a, um, I suppose, a bit of an internal struggle because you sometimes are desperate for people to understand, but then you feel that if you actually explain to them, it might be a kind of a sign of weakness. I don't have any time for myself anymore. What time I had anyway was, was quite limited, but I really don't have it. And it's so fixated on caring, 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 and you know, looking after and caring and looking after and checking the time and just, where am I in this? I've, I've, I've kind of lost myself. I was going to be doing this course. I was going to be doing this. I had all these ideas and I've had to put everything on the back burner. I, even just simple tasks around the house, um, I'm finding that my standards have fallen what I used to be able to do, washing that's left outside for two days, or, do you know, whoops, I forgot to bring the rabbit in, and, you know, and, and you just, 
it just greatly impacts you. It might sound like a small thing, but the day-to-day -day running of our house, when anybody comes in to our house, you know, there's always a lot of life, a lot of fun, a lot of, but it's tense and it's just not as, not as vibrant as it used to be. And, and that, that upsets me. Literally overnight it changed from my husband being the breadwinner, working over 50 hours a week. Um, and the money that I was bringing in was really to provide um, more of the treats, if you like. And how can you survive? My husband really couldn't focus on that and just left all the responsibility to me with regards to finances. And that's a new skill that I've had to really jump in at the deep end and really try to help us all out with. And um, I've had to lower my pride and um, ask for help with regards to food bank. So we've been on food bank for several months. I feel that it's important for health professionals to acknowledge you there. And I understand that their first port of call is with the patient. Um, but it's fantastic when you're, when you're valued, when, when you're addressed by name and you're part of the discussion because um, the people that have, have instigated that in this situation, in our family, it, it means so much it, because it just has a positive effect on me. I realise that they see me as a carer and that's such an important role because they in a sense, require me to, to help out in, in the things that they're not able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So my position is a very important position and I do feel like it's a partnership between the NHS and the health professionals and what carers provide on the day-to-day -day basis as well because we have eyes and we see the things that perhaps they don't see and we see the subtleties and we can relate that to them and um, hope that these, these subtleties perhaps might change the course that um, they were embarking on and it has in this particular instance. So we're very happy when the health professionals um, see our role together as a very strong and important role. So you can see from what Ramona says in the second half of that clip, it's really powerful for healthcare professionals to hear that. And um, I think what from that, and when healthcare professionals hear that from the carer, it really makes them think about, okay, what are the needs? What do we need to do? And these are just four things that we've sort of come across that we think um, that, that are the needs of care professionals. They need to be able to identify carers, and I'm sure that's the case across about early identification. We talk about a preventative agenda in Scotland, about trying to get to carers early. We speak to carers at breaking point all the time. And it's really the power lies with the healthcare professional to identify them early on. And that's a big, big part of what we talk to healthcare professionals about. <clears throat> about what Ramona said, about that recognition, about the value of the role the carer does in the care of the patient. I think a lot of the time healthcare professionals make a lot of assumptions about carers um, and they assume that they're enjoying doing it and they assume that they're doing it well. And uh, sometimes just that recognition and value from a professional can make a huge difference to the carer's life. A lot of the time it's about confidence, we found. It's about professionals actually having the confidence to speak to carers, especially those ones we see as expert carers, and especially for new staff. A lot of the time, again, it comes down to those assumptions. Will they know what they're doing? And the last thing, and the thing that's probably the most important for us in the room today and about Innovage and how great a service it's going to be, it's about um, professionals being knowledgeable about the services that are available locally to carers. There's so many services out there. How are professionals going to know who to care, you know, who to refer a carer to? Once they do get the confidence to talk to a carer and they open the can of worms, as healthcare professionals tell us, who, who can they trust to pass that information on to? Who can they refer to? And that's a big part of what, what we talk to um, healthcare professionals about. So how is this done? We think this is the need, so how is this done? 
In Scotland, we have a carer strategy um, that was in 2010 to 2015. It set out a number of outcomes for how we work with carers. And there was specific action points for people, for, um, for people in the workplace. And some of the points that came up is that we recognise carers as equal partners. We use that language in Scotland. And we fully acknowledge the expertise, knowledge and quality of care they give. And you can see the second one there. Health and social care staff have a proper appreciation of the role of carers and commit to engage again with equal and expert partnership. So how is this done? What is the implementation of it? Let's find that they've written that in a strategy. This is what you have to do. How, do, how was it done? Um, two bodies in Scotland, National Health Scotland and our social services in Scotland, got together and came together for a project called EPIC, Equal Partners in Care. And it's a web portal for people like myself who work within a region of Scotland and are tasked with delivering information to care professionals. Well, what do I tell them? I think I know what they need to know. And they came up with these set of principles, these core principles, and you can see them. Um, around that graph. So they're the kind of things that we, talk, that we talked about is the training needs of carers. And all the local, which I'll talk about in a second, can follow these, um, these principles to make sure that we're all singing from the same hymn sheet, we're all talking about the same thing. Within that web portal, there's a huge amount of information for us as professionals training professionals. Um, so there's uh, e-learning courses, there's um, links to what's, what's everybody else doing within Scotland. Um, so it's really a great um, resource to have. So at a local level, what I would say is, I know this is a presentation about ICT and I haven't talked much about ICT yet. <laughs> what, I, what we find in Scotland is that care professionals a bit like Catherine said, we have barriers to accessing IT, to ICT services. Any uh, Professionals don't have the time to sit on their computer in their workplace. They don't have time at home. They don't want to do it at home. They, um, they can't often. A lot of the staff don't have access to computers. So a big part of what we do is about how we do this locally. And, and to be honest, the biggest thing we're finding is face-to-face -face seems to be the most productive way of doing it, but using ICT principles on the back of it afterwards once we've hooked them in. <laughs> so using e-bulletins, using uh, websites, using all the types of things that Catherine mentioned, but the, the, the biggest thing is that face-to-face -to, -face to hook them in first. And this is just some examples of some of the um, initiatives within Scotland. So for those of you that know your Scotland, they're in the Highland, they're doing programmes up there, in Glasgow, in Dumfries and Galloway, and myself in NHS Lothian. Within NHS Lothian and a lot of the other initiatives, we do e-learning, and again, I, it's, it's not mandatory, so we just expect staff to do it. And this is just an outline of the types of things that we cover within the e-learning module. I won't go through it all, uh, but it's there to see. So we go through the steps of Think Carer, and uh, we use lots of different interactive ways of doing it. Uh, staff can access this on their intranet, on their intranet and um, I think over, you know, we have a huge number of staff that do it. The next step is to get it made mandatory to get it onto this mandatory training. And the video that I showed you is about to get onto the corporate induction. Um, so that'll make a huge difference uh, for all NHS professionals uh, to see um, this, this training and to hear from carers. I'm whizzing through this, but I'm, I'm conscious that I had five minutes of video, so that's fine. <laughs> um, so just a bit about change. So this is what we've been doing at the moment, but um, you'll have seen that the carer strategy ended in 2015 and we're entering a bit of a new phase in Scotland. And we've been really lucky to have our uh, local uh, Scottish government we're going through the process of a Carer Scotland Act in 2015. So this is the first really of its kind. And this was done just literally on the 9th of March. And you can see some of the proposals there. So it's all about how we support carers. Really nothing about workplace, actually. There, within the bill at the moment, there is not much about how we are going to follow on with workplace uh, training and how we're going to keep the workforce uh, and, uh, keeping on the great work that we're doing across Scotland. So this is really going to make an impact on how we do this in the future in Scotland. So I will keep you updated <laughs> um, on how that goes. And again, 
like Catherine said, uh, it's such an interesting topic, and I know that uh, everybody's experiences are very different across Europe, so I'll be really interested to see and hear from everybody and how they get on with dealing with uh, care professionals and the different needs that they have. Um, okay. Thank you.